All right, good morning. Who can tell me what this is and why you should care? Klingon bird of prey, bonus to the man. And why should you care? Because it's trying to kill you. But also why you should care is because this is a really flippin' cool airflow model. And what was it run on? It was run on AWS. That's a CFD++, 24 million cells. Here's a, a little graph showing you the ideal performance of that code versus what our previous technology, ENA, that's our elastic network adapter, which is that line that kind of gets sad and tapers off and doesn't really scale that well, versus our newer technology, EFA. So what is this magic EFA and why does it help with scaling to now where you see, yeah, we've got a little bit of a thing we got to work on with the plateau there over a thousand cores, but obviously this is much closer to ideal and we're actually performing real HPC workloads at scale in the cloud, something that you may hear lots of people say couldn't be done unless you're running IB. So here's what, what is EFA, what is this stack, how does this work, how does it compare to our existing technologies, why did we develop this thing? The whole idea was we wanted to stick to our principles of elasticity. Elasticity is one of the, the core principles of AWS and therefore when we looked at kind of the concept of having an IB ghetto in, in you know, just a handful of our data centers, we thought that just doesn't fit with how we think about cloud and HPC. So how can we do HPC workloads that require lower latencies than we can offer on our existing infrastructure? So we went off and created this elastic fabric adapter. Google it, there's some really cool OFED talks. Um, we've also got uh, one of our customers that's gonna be speaking. If you stick around to the end of the day, unfortunately it's like right before the end, so um, I know some of you may have to get to the airport, but really encourage you to stick around and see some of the results they got comparing their on-prem system to what they were able to run their codes uh, on AWS. Here are the two instances that we offer our, our EFA low latency uh, fabric on. And those are uh, specifically one compute optimized for those that are really want compute uh, workloads that can excel at scale. And then we have some for accelerated workloads, so running NVIDIA GPUs. I'll go more into each one of those and what they offer. The C5N is what we call our compute optimized instance. That N on the end there tells you that it's got enhanced networking. So whereas your standard C5, as we call it, has 25 gig networking, the C5N offers you 100 gig networking. And then with this new EFA fabric adapter, you get that lower latency. So what does that lower latency get you? Well, it gets you down from our standard, say 30 to 40 microseconds of latency, down to 15 microseconds. And we're gonna continue to improve that and drive that down, as well as keep those ranges tight for those workloads that really care about jitter. Also our P3DN, which I talked about earlier, it's on the you know, latest NVIDIA GPUs. It's extremely capable. We see lots of customers using this for uh, reservoir simulation, as well as a lot of uh, autonomous vehicle simulation. But it's not just the P3DN and the C5N. We have, uh, let's just say, a whole alphabet soup of those letters and numbers combined that mix together to give you the offerings that you want as a customer. So you're able to get the instance you want that's specific to your workload. So what does that architecture look like of an HPC system on AWS? We've talked a little bit about the, the network, we've talked a little bit about the compute, but as we know and as our uh, last panel talked a lot about, you gotta have storage. Well, our standard storage offerings are our EBS, our elastic block storage, EFS, uh, elastic file storage, and then the one kind of the granddaddy that we were known for is S3, or object storage. But for a lot of HPC customers, none of these really fit the bill. They're not high performant, they don't have the, the IO throughput that you need, or they're just too plain expensive. So we talked to our customers and said, hey, what does everybody in HPC love? And I'm a little biased because I'm a former Wham Cloud guy. So everybody in HPC loves Lustre. Why wouldn't you love Lustre? So we offered a managed offering of Lustre. So here, it's, it's kind of a different way of thinking about it in that you don't necessarily have to create your Lustre file system, keep that scratch up and running for days, months, years, and then shut it down when something goes wrong, upgrade it. 
In this case, you can keep your metadata and your data off on cheaper S3 object storage, spin up a file system, hydrate your data from that object store, do your workload that needs that POSIX API, flow the results back to S3, shut your file system down. And you're only paying for the time that your file system's up and running. So where are, we gonna, where are you gonna run all this? So we've talked about the compute, we've talked about the network, we've talked about the storage, but where actually in the world is my workload gonna run? You pick. We've got California, Oregon, Virginia, Sao Paulo, France, Germany, where if you have data locality requirements, especially for a lot in uh, academia or in specific government contracts, we have facilities that will guarantee you data residency, as well as with our GovCloud regions, they're only accessible by US citizens and only US citizens support them. And we've got a few more that we've, that we've kind of pre-announced that are coming soon, and those are the, the large orange dots that we're in development right now. I, I, this is the list of uh, compliance programs that we've already been certified on. Um, I got a little kick out of Doug's ECP brief. Yesterday we were talking about they're working on FISMA and HIPAA. Um, Doug, if you need any help, let me know. We've been doing that for years. So what market segments and industries are using uh, HPC uh, on AWS? Take your pick. Oil and gas, I, I talked a little bit about before. Design and engineering. Genomics, it's across multiple market segments. It's also various use cases. So I talked a little bit about the, the tightly coupled workloads that require that low latency fabric. But we've got you know, more of a high throughput computing, loosely coupled workloads, all the way down to uh, high volume data analytics. But what can you really do with HPC resources on the cloud. I love this story. Uh, they got kind of panned by, uh, I'll say, some uh, cognoscenti in the real HPC industry as a stunt. But um, here we had a customer, Cart Lab, didn't say a word to us, didn't tell us anything. We've heard lots of discussion about allocation these past couple days. They didn't go for an allocation. They didn't ask for anything. They just went, unbeknownst to us, and spun up an HPC cluster and ran Linpack and wound up on the top 500. And you can see how much it cost them, right around $5,000. Now some people said, okay, that's a stunt. Can you do any real work? What, what are you really doing there? Well, here's another one of our customers, Western Digital. They're doing simulations to see the, to try to simulate the compound interactions when they're making, looking at uh, chemicals to create those platins for for their uh, hard drives. So their typical workflow there took about three weeks for them to get through a simulation run. Here they scaled up a million cores on AWS, ran it in eight hours. Now think about what that does to time to market, to business value, to research. If you can cut down three weeks of computing into eight hours, So last, I want to leave you with this, and that is a little exercise for everyone. Um, if you're interested, this is cost, costs you less than a dollar to spin up your own HPC cluster. Take this link down, take a picture of it. Um, we'll have it you know, in the slides that we put out. And what this allows you to do is a little exercise that walks you through using AWS Parallel Cluster, which is our HPC cluster orchestration tool. And it'll take you step by step to where you can have instantiated uh, an HPC cluster that's usable for whatever you want on AWS. And there, I almost got you out in time for lunch. Thanks very much. Uh, great, great talk. Uh, I just want to ask about the Descartes situation, uh, just to explore that a bit. I mean, I did some back of the envelope calculations and figured out that that was probably 500 odd uh, C5 instances running for about two hours. 
uh, for that five thousand dollar price tag, which you know, on a on a one year basis is about ten million dollars. Um, how long does it take to spin up a five hundred instant placement group? Uh, on you, you mentioned doing it in minutes, but can you really get five hundred instances lined up in 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 a couple of minutes, or does it take hours or days? Um, first of all. Those calculations we can discuss later. They're, they're not entirely accurate, but we can talk about that. Um, second of all, uh, it takes on the on the order of hours, and again, it depends on how wide you're, how broad you're looking to spin up. Like if you're saying I only want to see five in this region and this AZ, then you're going to be constrained. If you say I want to see five and M5 and R5, and it can be in Ireland or the U.S or France, then it's going to spin up much much more quickly. It, it all depends on what you're looking for. Right. You're not going to get the extreme, if you're, if you're going cross AZs, you're not going to get the extremely low latency. But again, the one thing about that, that uh, I didn't point out is that Descartes run, that was, as you noted, that was on a standard C5. So that was not the, the C5N using EFA. That's kind of using our old technology. 